This is Mrs. Anderson, Resource Teacher 4 through 6, reading The Rescuer, page 56. We finish our supa, and Granny Torelli places the sliced oranges on two salad plates, and then she sprinkles olive oil and salt and pepper and parsley over the top. Isn't that something, she says, that Prince Bailey coming to your rescue? Yes, I say, it was something. And I'm thinking how I want to be the rescuer. I want to rescue Bailey. I want to fix him, give him new eyes, make everything easier for him. And Granny Torelli, that mind reader, she knows I'm thinking about Bailey. And she says, so Rosie, are you going to tell me about that Bailey? Why you are so mad at him today? I get up, go get the braille books, bring them back to the table. Watch, I say. And I open a book and close my eyes and run my fingers over the raised bumps. And I read. I am still a little slow, but I read. And when I stop and open my eyes, Granny Torelli is sitting there with her eyes sparkly, shiny, wet. Oh, Rosie, she says, you did it. That smart head of yours. It is like a miracle. Show me. And so I kneel beside her and I put her fingers on the page and let her feel the bumps, which are letters and words. It's hard, I say. You need to start with just a few letters. She hands the book back to me. It's a miracle, Rosie. Bailey must be so proud. I close the book. No, I say. Bailey is not proud. Bailey is mad. That Bailey boy. And so I tell her what I've been wanting to tell her all night. About how it took me a whole year to learn the Braille. In secret from one of my teachers at lunch every day sneaking the books home, opening them at night in bed, wanting it to be a surprise to everyone, but especially, most especially, to Bailey. And today after school, I went over to Bailey's, so excited to show him. I flopped on the couch, yakking away about this and that, and casually, oh so casually, I reached over for one of his braille books and I opened it. He was sitting on the floor, his back against my knees. He heard the book open. What book is that, he said. I told him. One of mine, he said. Yes, I said. Want me to read you a little bit? <laughs> sure, he said. Sure. You just go right ahead and read. He was feeling very smug. I could tell so sure that I couldn't read his braille book. I let my fingers move across the first line, and then I backed up and started at the beginning, reading aloud. There is a place where I often go. It is cool and calm. Bailey whipped around, put his hands out, found my hands on the book. He pushed my hands away and grabbed the book and ran his fingers over the page rapidly. You cheated, he said. You probably got the regular book and memorized the opening. He slammed the book shut. I grabbed the book from him. I didn't cheat, Bailey. Listen. I opened the book again and read the whole first page. And as I was reading, it got very quiet. As if, as if Bailey were not even breathing. And when I finished, I felt so proud. And I thought Bailey would be so happy, so proud. I looked up at Bailey, but Bailey was not happy, was not proud. He said, you think you're pretty smart, don't you, Rosie? Yes, I said. Well, get over yourself, Rosie. What? I said, 
Get over yourself, Rosie. I felt as if all the blood in my body were pouring down, down, down right out the bottom of my feet. I got up, started for the door, expecting, hoping, wishing he would stop me, but he didn't stop me. I opened the door, stepped out onto the porch with no words in me, no breath in me, just a loud wail going on in my head and slam. Just like that, Bailey slammed the door behind me as if I were nobody, nobody, no pal, just a nuisance, nobody. This concludes The Rescuer.